This is Joe. And this is Nat. And you're listening to the Getting Better With Age podcast, the show that helps you navigate midlife challenges and turn them into opportunities to grow and evolve into a happier, healthier, and more empowered you. And remember, getting older doesn't mean that the best years have to be behind you. We believe, like a fine wine, you and your life can get better with age. And we're here to show you exactly how to do that. So grab a glass of vino, kick off your shoes, and join us in discovering how to make the next chapter of your life the best one yet. Hey, it's Joe. And it's Nat. And welcome back to another episode of Getting Better with Age. Now, all the single ladies in the house... I hope so. If well, you're there you want to listen. Isn't that a song by Beyonce? Isn't there? All the single ladies. All I'm not. I'm not gonna sing it. All the single ladies. All the so single ladies. if you're one of those single ladies and you're in the house, you're gonna love this because this podcast is for you. Today we're gonna talk about unlocking your love potential, how to improve your ability to manifest the love that your heart desires, and we believe the love you were created to have. How cool is that? But, but before we do that, I want to check in with wifey. You know, see what's going on in your world. Wifey's good. A bit of a stressful week, but um, definitely better. Um, yeah, no, it's an exciting week. Um, baseball started for our boys. Yes, my favorite <laughs> time of the year. I love baseball. And I know some of you going, baseball is like boring as hell. And oh, no, we love baseball. Yes. Now, I agree. It can be boring. But why I love baseball? Because it's like a game within a game. If you're just watching it from the surface, it's literally like watching paint dry. It can be boring, even with the new rules to speed up the game. But if you understand the game and the strategic moves that have to happen mm -hmm. offensively and defensively during a game, it can be a, a fascinating game. And I think it's a lot like life. And that's why I've always loved it, because life can be from the surface like crazy. <laughs> But if you really understand, like things happen a certain way and there are things you can do to put yourself in position to succeed. And there are things mm -hmm. right. And there's things that you can do that will put yourself in position to fail and struggle. It kind of works the same way, which kind of ties in today's into today's topic, which is about manifesting the love that your heart desires, how to unlock your love potential, because we truly believe that if you have a desire in your heart, you are meant to experience that. But whether you will or not has more to do with you than anything else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is something that we've, you know, in our personal life, not just when we were dating, that is really an integral part of who we've become is learning how to manifest and, and putting energy in the right way. So for those who are, who are there, who are listening, going, oh, is this another one of those law of attraction talks? Like I've heard this bullshit so much. I no, watched the secret. Not. I put up my vision board. It didn't work. <laughs> you know, help them to understand like what the difference is? What is manifesting? Well, manifesting is really bringing into your ex bringing what you want into existence. Yeah, it's not just sitting on the couch thinking something and and say, okay, you know, I want a million dollars and expecting a million dollars to fall from the sky. No, it's about really, truly embodying what you want and bringing it into your existence. Yes, I agree 100%. And it, it's so important to understand that because it's literally bringing your dreams into your reality. That's what manifesting mm -hmm. in. This isn't about putting up a vision board, saying a bunch of affirmations and thinking the man of your dreams is going to ring your doorbell. It's really not about that. Because, you know, what we know to be true is this universe is this giant system of energy. You know, mm -hmm. that's what quantum physics really is. You know, for those of you who go, yeah, I've heard this. You don't really understand. Go do your research. Like, really explore what quantum physics is because this is science we're not talking yeah. woo -woo bullshit we're, cool. we're talking like this is how this actual universe that we live in works and it's all energy and the thoughts the words the actions that we all have emit a certain frequency a certain energy and when we do with things a certain way what we put out into the universe literally comes back to us now that being said i know some of you are saying yeah but i've tried this and i've prayed and i've done all those things yes but you also understand there's this higher intelligence, which we call universe, divine source, God. Again, to us, it's, it's all interchangeable. But that intelligence knows if you want to have the love that you would create to have, the love that your heart desires, if you're doing things inappropriately or things that are in what's called energetic dissonance, mm -hmm. which is basically resistance to what you want, it's not going to happen. No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you put a vision, because that's where you have to do your work. And that's what I'm going to talk about today, because what we've discovered is there's basically two things. 
that will help you unlock your love potential and manifest the love your heart desires. So let's start with the first one. And the first one is clarity. Let's talk about that. So it's if you have a lack of clarity, it's that you really don't know what you want. You may think that you know what you want, but do you really, are you really crystal clear on what you're looking for and what you want in a man in a relationship? Yeah. And it's a lot like I use the story. I love analogies. I love stories. If you haven't <laughs> learned by now, but it's like the Goldilocks and the three bears, right? She goes to eat the porridge, right? Was it porridge that she was eating? I think it was the porridge. Well, the por oatmeal, the porridge, por no, you know, was, cream was, of wheat, whatever the hell porridge. she was eating, <laughs> right? And she goes to eat the first one. Oh, it's too hot. So then what happens? She goes to eat the other one. Oh, it's too cold. And then she wants the third. She eats the third. And it's just right. Well, clarity works the same way. You know, one of the things that I've discovered in this journey and working with women now for almost 12 years, single women, that is, is that you have the women on the left who are like, you know, I have a list of 92 things. And if he doesn't meet every one of the criteria, he's not the right guy for me. And then there are the other women on the right who are just like, yeah, I don't know what I really want. I just want a nice guy who treats me right. Yeah. And let's face it. I've never <laughs> met one woman who says, you know what? I want an asshole who's unemployed, who's living in his mother's basement. Okay, That doesn't happen. So I would hope at this stage in the game, we all want someone who loves us, who treats us nice, who's respectable and responsible and who's emotionally available. Right. You would hope that your partner would want those things. But if you're going to spend the rest of your life with someone, there are things that are ultimately more important. Right. Or are just as important. And so you have to have clarity. You have to be clear on what is it that you really want. Now, it's sad, but, you know, a lot of our target audience, our tribe, we call them, are in their 40s, 50s and 60s. Right. And for a lot of them, they're like, you know, I don't know what I want. And what I know to be true is it's not that they really don't know what they want. It's like almost they're afraid to admit it because if they admit it, they're afraid they might not get it. And so that lack of clarity is a game they unconsciously play to keep them in the world so they don't have to really put themselves out there and, and got to get hurt. Keep them safe. Yeah. Right. So if you're one of those individuals who are like, you know what, I think I'm too picky. Well, you have to be smart. There's a difference between being picky and being smart, and you have to know the difference. And if you don't know the difference, well, that could be one of the reasons why you struggle. And it's why you invest in the wrong men. It's, it's something I see all the time is women investing in men when it's clear they're not the partner that they really want. But because they're not clear and because they doubt themselves or question things or listen to other people, they give these guys the time, yeah. hoping that things will change, hoping they'll be turned into the person that they'll want to be with. Or maybe they're better than the last schmuck that they dated or they married. And they're like, well, you know, compared to that jerk, this guy's not that bad. So, you right. know what, maybe I should like kind of settle. And, and we're here to tell you is you do not have to settle. No, definitely not. And I think at this stage, most of us have played that game. We've had relationships or marriages where we know we settled or stayed in it too long. And hopefully we've learned that lesson. And we're here to tell you that you should never settle. And one of my favorite quotes is when, when you settle for crumbs, you always wind up hungry. Yep. Right. And never, ever, ever settle for anything in life that is in alignment with what your heart really wants. Unless you really are, unless your heart is saying, you know, what, I truly am okay settling. Because again, we say we're going to get to the end of our journey and we're going to look back and we're going to go, am I glad I settled? Am I okay with that? Or should I have gone for what my heart really wanted? Should I have given up the good to go for the great? Right. Well, you know, when, when you're settling, it's kind of like you're not being, it's like, are you being too picky or not picky enough? Right. So if you're settling, it's like, okay, maybe I'm not being picky enough. Right. So it's like, <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't like a guy with a hangnail, but you know what, I'm going to be with him anyway. So is that really a big thing or something really big? Like, you know, like when I was, dating and before i met joe i'm like are you telling are you saying you settled for me i settled for you because <laughs> you had a hangnail no no I no did? i one of the big deal breakers for me was you know someone who smoked i did not want somebody who smoked and if i ended up with somebody like that i would have been settling because that was really important to me right and i think that's so important because it's your life it's your relationship some individuals 
you know, we had a conversation in our diamond club the other day. Some individuals say, you know, I'm okay with somebody who smokes yeah. and, and they really are, even though they don't smoke other, other individuals like no way, there's no way I can be with a smoker. That's the beauty. It's your life. It's your relationship. What is it that you want? What is it that your heart desires? And that's what we're talking about, you know, getting clear. You know, we talked about all the time. If you wanted to go on vacation, so describe somewhere you want to go on vacation, but don't give me the destination. Don't tell me, like, I want to go to Hawaii. Okay, I want to go somewhere that's warm. I want to be able to sit on the sand and stay in my chair and just be nice and comfy and warm and enjoying the sun. Okay, beautiful. Here you go. Here's two <laughs> tickets to the Sahara Desert. It's warm. It's sunny. It's got sand. You can sit on your chair. Is that going to is that going to make you happy? No, it's. Are you going to be fulfilled? No, but okay. what I should have said was, I want to be somewhere warm, on a beach with sand, but with the ocean breeze blowing through my hair, with the mini bar on the side of the pool. <laughs> now we're it? talking, you get where right? We're going and say, so, okay, now I have tickets to Hawaii, and you're like, oh, hey, great, Hawaii, that's great. Or you know, maybe you think it's Hawaii, but the universe says, you know what, it's really Turks and Caicos. Like that's where we have to be clear and we have to do our part so the universe can do its part. But when when we pigeonhole mm. ourselves, it has to be this way. It has to be 92 million things. That's when we run into trouble. Right. Right. So again, go back to the analogy with Goldilocks and the three bears. You gotta be three bears, you gotta be in the middle, right? You gotta be specific and general, but you can't be too specific and you can't be too general. Like it's kind of like that sweet spot that in the happy middle. medium. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to manifest or improve your ability to manifest the love of your heart, to, you got to be clear. Yeah. Okay. You got to know now, what you want. Number two, another one we see all the time. Confidence. Confidence. That's a big one. Your confidence in yourself and your ability to put yourself out into the world to create that to find the type of man you're looking for and to have the type of relationship mm -hmm. you really want is huge as you know the president that nobody likes is huge <laughs> <laughs> can't say you know with everything going on yeah, right, right but <laughs> you have to have confidence so let's talk about confidence in yourself and and why that's important i mean we all know that but you know, and I know if we talk to most people to say, yeah, I'm confident, but I always have conver conversations with individuals like I'm confident. I'm like, all right, tell me about the last guy that you're with. Well, he treated me like a, a, a convenience. You know, he wasn't there. He disrespected me. And it's like, well, if you were really confident in yourself, you wouldn't put up with that crap. Right. So you have to understand human behavior is 5% conscious and logical and 95% unconscious and logical. So if you want to know where you're at, just look at what shows up in your life. Look at your past relationships. So if you really are confident in yourself, look at your relationships. Do you stand in your truth? Do you create firm barriers? Do you have strict lines in the sand? Are you willing to walk away to give up the good to go for the great? Again, none of this is judgment. This is how we learn. This is this is the self-work that we all need to, right. to go and, through. And the biggest thing is being able to trust yourself and to trust your judgment. And I think that's where a lot of the problems lie because you know, you've been hurt so much in the past, you don't trust yourself to make the right decision. You don't trust yourself that you're going to be a good judge of character this time. So that, that's the biggest thing. So building that confidence in yourself to say, wait a minute, I do know what I want. I do trust myself. And I know I'm going to make the right judgment call this time. Right. And when that kind of, you know, goes into the second part is, is really confidence in your ability to manifest the love, the relationship that your heart desires. Because you can be really confident in yourself, right? You can know, hey, you know, what? I'm a great person. I've got so much to offer. I've got my shit together. I've done work on myself. I'm in a good place. And any man who's going to be with me is going to be lucky to be with me, right? Right. You can be confident in yourself. But if you're not confident in your ability to go out into this crazy world, to put yourself in position to find that type of guy and to identify that type of guy so that you don't waste your time with the wrong guys. And I'm not talking about the wrong guys, the guys who are assholes. Like at this stage in the game, if you can't identify those guys, you got bigger problems. Exactly. But we're talking about those guys who are decent guys, you know, but they're not the right guy. See, I believe there are three types of guys. There's the wrong guy, 
there's the good guys, and then there's the right guy. Okay. And so your job is to be able to differentiate quickly between the good guys and the right guys so that you don't invest your time and energy with someone who will never love you the way you were created to be loved, who, who can give you the relationship that you truly desire in your heart. Right. How many times have you heard, oh, come on, why, why, you know, what's wrong with him? He's a really good guy. Yeah. And that's fine. And he could be a fabulous guy with a great head on his shoulder and everything else, but you just kind of don't mesh like you're just he's just not the one for you and that's okay and well that, you don't that's, need to settle for somebody that and and that's know. that's where we get into our trouble and that's kind of where we circle back to clarity yeah. is because you know our friends will say well you know he's a decent guy give him a chance you know what's wrong with him you know compared to the schmuck that she's married to <laughs> she's like she'd kill for a guy like that and that might be true for her right but is that your truth what is it that you want? Who is the man? What is the relationship that you desire in your heart? Because I believe and we believe 100 percent you can have that. We, we know we've helped people create that, but it doesn't just happen magically. It, it, you don't just luck out. It's, you're not just sitting somewhere and, you know, the guy knocks, you know, in the movies where he knocks his um, shopping cart. Oh. It, into yours and he, into and, he, and, he, and, he, and he starts a conversation <laughs> oh what you got there and next thing you know six months later you're in love to you get married i'm not saying that can't happen but look you can jump off a bridge without a parachute and you may live but it's reckless behavior i'm a big believer in not living life recklessly and living life smart right and doing things, understanding how things really work so you can put yourself in position to ultimately have what it is that your heart desires. Sure, exactly. And and like talking about before, your you know, your ability to be able to find what you're looking for, your ability to trust yourself to know again that you're gonna make the right judgment. Um, and it's your, you know, knowing how to date, right? It's things are so different nowadays, you know, than twenty 30 years ago. So it's kind of like, oh my God, you know, the whole online, online dating thing. And it's like, I, you could see how that could, you know, kind of stop somebody from really putting themselves out there. But that's when you really, when you have that confidence and that clarity, that's when, you know, it's like, okay, I'm ready. Well, and that's a, that's a huge part. Cause that, as you're saying, and 100% correct is that dating today is completely different than it was when we were in our twenties and our thirties. That doesn't mean you can't do it. And it doesn't mean it's bad. I, I, anybody. I actually think it's it's better when you <laughs> understand how to date correctly, when you have a strategy. The problem is, is most people don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. You know, they write a profile. They don't know how to write a profile. They put themselves online and they hope guys will interact with them and they smile and everybody wastes time and they spend three weeks sending emails back and forth with some guy who's texting for like months right who's clearly not interested <laughs> in getting to know you because he may be a scammer or he just may not be emotionally available or he may be doing that with 30 other people and he's playing a bunch of games and he's not emotionally available or ready to go forward and invest in a woman in a relationship and that's why it gets frustrating yeah, and i say this all the time i call it the dating merry-go-round tell me if this resonates you're like, ah, I got nowhere to go, nothing to do. Don't have a lot of single friends. And there's not a lot of guys who go out where we go. So you know what? I got to go online. So you go online and you try that. And you may get some dates, but none of them lead to the relationship you want. You may have some relationships, but they don't lead to the relationship you want. So then you're like, all right, well, I guess I got to go back out there again. So you get back on the merry-go-round. Mm -hmm. Take a couple of spins around and you wind up back in the same place. Can't do this again. I got to stop. I got to get off and you get off. More time goes by and you're sitting and go, what else am I going to do? What? All right. So you get back on the merry-go-round and maybe you change sites and same crap happens. And what you experience in your reality is basically the same thing. Now, what we espouse is, is using that as information to go, okay, What's going on? Right. Why am I attracting the wrong well, men? It's not happening. Why am I investing both. time and energy on men only to find out six months, a year, two years, three years down the road that they're emotionally available? And that's your job. And that's, that's part of dating is being able to screen men, not just to figure out, okay, are you a good guy? But to determine, are you the kind of guy that I want to invest in because we want the same things? Right. And that's a big part of this process. And so, Matt, you're absolutely right, is that you've got to know how to date. Yeah. 
Yeah. And what blows my mind, I'm just going to add this because it blows my mind that like we have some women in our community and in our um, manifesting love and midlife community that say, oh yeah, I've been dating a guy for two months and now he's kind of getting weird. But then it turns out they only actually went on two dates, but they were just texting back and forth. With two... That's not dating somebody for right. two months. Right. <laughs> I'm right. sorry. That yeah. just blows my mind. Yes. I'm sorry, yeah. but it's just- Yeah, and that's what, you know, <laughs> one of the things you, we hope you learn from, you know, engaging with us is that dating is a process. Yeah. And like any other process, the more you understand how that process works, and the things you can do to put yourself in position to succeed, the more you increase your chances of succeeding. And that's really yeah. what we wanted to talk about today is, you right. know, is how to unlock, unlock your love potential. Cause we believe you were born with it. The universe said it's within you. You are freaking amazing. You deserve the greatest yep. love in the world, but that universe can only support you and do its part, but you need to do your part first. Right. And just think about what it'll be like once you really have that clarity, and you've really built that confidence in yourself and in your judgment, like how cool is that going to be? Right. Just imagine like <laughs> tomorrow, you're just like, you know what? I am crystal clear. Uh -huh. I know exactly what I want, exactly who my ideal man is, exactly what my ideal relationship is, and I'm not going to settle. And you have that confidence in yourself. You know, I will not settle for that ever again. The second I see or the second I know my truth is it's not the wrong guy, I'm walking away. And you're a confident in your ability to go out and make that happen, how to put yourself out there, how to engage guys, how to screen guys, how to pick the right guy for the right reason. Then it's just the game. Then it's like, all right, it becomes like clothes shopping. All right, just going to keep yeah, trying on try the right one ones on. until I find the one that meets all my buying criteria. And that's really as simple as it can be. So we always leave with homework, yes. right? So what we want you to do is to take some mirror time. And really look at your life, step out of your life as an observer, and then see which of these areas may you be a little off in, you know, is it a clarity issue? Like, are you struggling with clarity? Do you yeah. think you're too picky or you, maybe you're not picky enough? You know, you don't know what you really want. You've never really taken the time and that's okay. Love yourself. You didn't know. Now you do. Right. Or is it a confidence thing? Right. Are you? Are you lacking that confidence in yourself? Because, you know, you've gone through some failed relationships or you've had a failed marriage and that's done a number on, on your confidence. And, or you think that, you know, you have to be younger, you have to look a certain mm -hmm. way, you have to have certain measurements, you have to be a certain age, a certain body type. And, and you, you believe that is why you're not confident, yep, not about okay? that. which you believe is true, but is it really true? Or is it, you know, just your confidence and your ability to date, like Natalie said. You just don't understand this whole dating right. thing, right? You got to start shining light on where you may be stuck because that's how you learn where and how to make the changes. Yeah, it could be one, it could be both. It could be, you know, you could be okay in both of these, but you just need to get better in both of them. Yeah. You know, it right. depends on you. That's why you want to really, it's, you know, step back and kind of think about where you're at. Right. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? No, but we, we have something special for them. Okay. You want to give it to them? Yeah, I will. <laughs> We've got something really cool we for you. We really do. Listen, if you're really struggling, again, like I said, with one of these two or both of them, you know, we have a special opportunity for you because we have what we call a manifesting love assessment. It's a quick 20 minute call um, where we'll hop on the phone with you and really kind of talk about where you're at, you know, where you're struggling, if you're struggling, which one of these, if it, are you clear enough, kind of, kind of to help you determine where you're at with these. Right, right. If you haven't learned, for those of you who don't know us, maybe new to this community, the reason why we do this is because, as you see, we love each other. We're best friends. We're partners. We're we're one hundred percent committed to going through this thing called life. And both of us, at a time in our life, didn't believe we would have the kind of relationship that we were looking for, for many reasons: clarity, confidence, all of that. But we were fortunate enough to be able to manifest it, and we want other people to have what we have. I always use the expression: if if you were starving or you were thirsty. And you lived in a village where everybody was thirsty. And all of a sudden you went on your journey and you found the well where there was enough water for everybody. Wouldn't you go back and say, hey, you know what? Look at what I found. You don't have to be thirsty anymore. And that's really why we do this. You know, our hearts 
everything we do is, is to help people find love, but not just love like, oh, I love him. He treats me like shit. <laughs> We're talking love where, you know what? He's there for me when I'm down, when I break both my arms, he's taking me to the <laughs> hospital. He's taking me to the doctor, you know, and it's that true 100% connection and commitment. Right. And so as Matt says, if that's something that you're interested, you want to just jump on the phone, we'll have a conversation yeah, and, and we'll just it. see exactly. Is it these two issues? You know, and we'll talk about creating a strategy or is there something deeper? Because what we what I know to be what I know to be true is most of the time these things are just like surface problems. There's usually stuff going on at a deeper stuff, level yeah. and you need to get to that and eradicate that. So that so anyway. Too. Oh, I'm sorry. I interrupted him again. Right. I do that from yes. time to time. Well, but I still love her and I'm still 100% yeah. committed to her. Anyway, if you are interested in, you know, just hopping on that call, um, it's the the um, link is thelovementors.com slash assessment. And it's also linked in the description in this podcast. So you can just click on that and schedule a quick 20 minute uh, right. call. And that is the love mentor. So T H E love mentors dot com slash assessment. And again, the link will be in the bottom of this. Yep. So anything else before we wrap it up? No, that's it. Hope All you right. Enjoyed. Have a great week. We love and appreciate you. We'll see you next All week. Right, Be bye. blessed.